Hello and thanks for your interest in this lecture. We're going to talk about loading spatial data into a MySQL database. This is something that's a little tricky. When I first started working with MySQL, of course, this was the first question that comes up. How do you get your data in there? I did some Googling. I looked at a couple of videos, did some reading, and most of the answers were just not really viable for me. I tried several. MySQL actually has a functionality to import a shapefile, but I was never actually able to get that to work. If you go to PHP Admin, which is a web-based GUI to work with MySQL data, you'll notice that under the Import tab, we can choose a file. We have File Format, and one of these file formats is an Esri shapefile. And MySQL Workbench has something similar. It's called Import Spatial Data. But I was never actually able to get this to work. And from what I found out, both the coordinate reference system and the character set has to be identical. And in general, some of the character set options in MySQL don't match up with the character set options that my shapefile was in, which is just UTF-8. But in MySQL, there's dozens of kinds of UTF-8. And so it was never clear to me which one exactly. And then also they have to be in the exact same coordinate reference system. And that was kind of a problem because I'm actually using MariaDB. And in MariaDB, you can't specify a coordinate reference system for an entire geometry column. You can specify it for individual geometries, but I think that may have been part of the problem as well. Anyway, it was frustrating. When I first started, it just seemed like there should be an easier way. And so I did some thinking and came up with an easier way that I think will work for most cases. I'm not sure how it's going to work if you have tons and tons of really large data or what exactly the limits are. But say I want to import this linear projects into my database. There's like 1,100 records. Some of these lines are fairly large, but it's not like bringing in a really detailed county layer for a large data or anything like that in terms of size. So again, I'm not sure what the upper limits on size would be, but I assume there is an upper limit, but I don't really know. But for smaller data sets, probably the kind that most of us work with, this solution works. And the beautiful thing is, it'll work with any kind of data that you can read into QGIS, which is just about everything. You don't have to export it to a shapefile and then read it back in. And um, that can be problematic because shapefiles will truncate your field names to 10 spaces. And that can be really, really annoying. But basically what I did was I would right click on the record that I want to export and go to export and save features as. And I want it in the CSV format and I'll choose a file name. I'm just going to call this linears and I'll click save. It's not really saving anything yet. It's just entering that path name in the file name text box. And something else that's really cool about doing it in QGIS is that you can transform it to any coordinate system you want using this. So we're going to leave it as a default, but if I wanted to convert this to WGS84, I could do that just by changing the coordinate reference system here. And then the character set encoding is UTF-8. If you want to, you can choose to save only the selected features. So you can use this method to just create a subset of your data. You can uncheck fields if you don't want them in the new data set. And then under the geometry type, I'm going to change the line string. Then I'm going to force it to be a multi-line string. And there's no reason to include Z dimensions, even if we had them, because MySQL can't handle a Z dimension on the X and Y. So we'll leave that unchecked. And then under layer options for geometry, we'll say as WKT. And there I have my linears table. And it's kind of hard to see, I think, because it's almost the same color as this other one. So let's change the symbology on it. So we'll go to properties and then symbology. And we'll make it a red line and increase the width a bit. And there we see that we have it. And this question mark indicates that this layer has no spatial reference system set. So the coordinates are in NAT83 UTM zone 13, but there's no place where that's set for the entire layer. But we can set it there just by clicking on that question mark, which we did. And so now QGIS knows that this layer is in UTM. And if somebody were to go in and change the projection for the project or something else, they would transform and still show up in the right place. 
They showed up in the right place originally because the coordinate reference system for this project was also in UTM, but if it had been in that long or something for some reason, all this data would have showed up someplace way far away from any place on Earth. So anyhow, now we have this CSV layer, and I can look at the CSV layer instance in Excel, and here we can see that the first column is WKT, and everything's a multi-line string because we forced everything to be multi, and all of our coordinates for each one of these multi-line strings in UTM. So we have our spatial data in WKT as a column in our CSV. So now the question is, how do we get this into MySQL as a spatial layer? And so let's go to PHP My Admin. We're going to import this file. So we'll say choose file. We'll go to our data directory and linear CSV. So our format is still CSV. We have the option to put in a name for the new table. So I'm just going to call this linears. And another thing that's really important is we have to tell it that the first line contains the table column names, which again, as we can see, it does. The first line contains the names of the columns for each of these. And then I'll go to import, and it looks like everything was fine. Let's take a look. Here's our linears. We have our WKT and everything else. Something that we do have in MySQL is the ability to take geometry in WKT text format and convert it to a binary geometry object that MySQL can understand. And so to do that, we'll go to the structure for this table. We're going to add a column after project, so we'll add it at the end. The name of the project is going to be geom. The type is going to be, here's our spatial types. So we'll say multi-line string, and then we'll click save. And so now we have a geometry column. All we have to do is get this WK text converted to binary and put it in the geometry column. And to do that, we need to use a SQL update statement. So we'll say update linears, and we'll set the geometry to st underscore geom from text, and we'll pass it the text that's in the WKT field, and we're also going to pass it a spatial reference ID of 26913. Otherwise, these would show up with a spatial reference ID of 0, and that will cause problems sooner or later. And let's see, I think we need an equal sign in there, and that looks good. So I'll come down here and click go. Do I really want to update? Yes, I do. 1,112 rows affected. And now if I go to my linears table, I can see I have the geometry. Even though this is showing as WKT text, it actually is the binary geometry, I believe. Let's go back to QGIS, and we'll remove this linears CSV layer, and We'll go to layer, add layer, add vector layer, database, and this is the connection I want. So I'll click add, I'll go to linears, and again I'll set the coordinate reference system for the layer. Now in the regular MySQL version 8, you can set the spatial reference ID for an entire column, but you can't do that in MariaDB, and this data is actually stored in MariaDB. If we had MySQL version 8, which was where this data was coming from, then we wouldn't have to do that. It would know what the spatial reference ID of this data was. So again, let's change this just to, a, say, a dash red line. And there we see we have all our data right where it was. So this is coming from MySQL. It's data that we just loaded in using this technique of converting a QGIS layer to a CSV file and then reading the CSV file into MySQL. And there may be some other things you need to do, like set the primary key for this layer. Um, you may want to check your dates to see if your dates came in in the right format, and maybe reformat your dates if you have to. So it's not perfect, but it does work. And it'll work with data in any format that QGIS will read, which again is pretty much everything. So again, thanks for your interest in this layer. Hope it helped, and we'll see you in my next video.